Welcome, everyone, to the first ever episode of NWHL Open Ice. I'm your host, Gamer Doc. We've got a show planned for you tonight. We've certainly got a show. Some pretty exciting things. Uh, we've got Amanda Levier in the building. I mean, the virtual building. She's like not like here right now, but she's, she's going to be here, I promise. Uh, we've got a lot of really awesome show. Lots of really awesome stuff planned for you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so for those of you who have never tuned in for an episode of NWHL Open Ice, uh, which is everyone, myself included, because this is the first episode, uh, here's how it's going to go down. So I'm going to ask Lev some questions, but then we're going to turn it over to you, and you're going to ask Lev some questions, because... That is one of the things that makes Twitch so special, right? You're not sitting at home watching this on your television. You are watching this in real time. This is happening in real time, and we want your feedback. We want your questions to let. So here's what's going to happen, everyone. Pay attention. Write this down. In a little while, we're going to open up for questions. Now, in order to type in Twitch chat, you need a Twitch account. So if you haven't already, go over here. Where is it? Here? Here? Oh, this side. This side. And click that sign up button. And then after you hit that cl click that sign up button, hit that follow button so that you will be ready to ask your questions for Lev in Twitch chat. The second way to submit questions is to tag us on Twitter. Hashtag NWHL Open Ice. You can start submitting your questions now. Who's to stop you? Who's to stop you? But before we get to that, we have something we need to talk about, which is this weekend, we had a pretty exciting weekend of hockey. I don't know if you all saw that, uh, but some, some stuff happened. There was some pretty cool stuff. Uh, the Whale got their first win of the season. They squeaked by the Riveters in overtime, 4-3, to three, and got their first win of the season. Proud of you. Uh, they then headed over and played Boston. And for those of you following Boston season this weekend, have you ever seen when an unstoppable force hits like 
anything? That is what Boston is doing this weekend. Undefeated. Undefeated. 18 wins in a row. Boston, what are you doing? What have you done? 18 wins in a row. They kept up their streak. We're proud of you. On the flip side, on the flippity flop, the Whitecaps and the Buttes took on each other this weekend. Took on each other? Played each other this weekend. And... It was pretty exciting. So if you look at the final score of Saturday's game, it doesn't reflect how close and how awesome that game was. It, it just doesn't. Because the score Saturday was 8-2, to two, but when the period started, when the third period started, it was 3-2. to two. And the Whitecaps got five unanswered goals in the third period. So aside from that, other pretty exciting things. I don't know if you all saw this. But we hit 2 million views on Twitch. The NWHL hit 2 million views. 2 million. 400,000 people tuned in this weekend to watch the NWHL. I mean, which is spectacular. If you're watching this show, you're obviously a fan of hockey. You're obviously a fan of the league. But those are the numbers that these women deserve. Those are the numbers that these athletes deserve. And it's finally happening. We're doing it thanks to all of you. Thanks to Twitch. Thanks to everything that's happening. This is exciting. I'm excited. Are you guys excited? You know what else I'm excited for? Our guest. I'm excited for our guest. Amanda, she's coming on the show right now. Lev requires no introduction, but I'm going to give her one anyway. I'm going to give her one every way. Lev was drafted in the first ever NWHL draft. She's won two Isabel Cups and was the 2018 goaltender of the year okay without further ado let's welcome our guest hi lev hey thanks so much for having me i'm super excited to be the first guest on this show oh my gosh we are so excited to have you you've had okay so thank you so much i'm so excited to get inside of that like beautifully decorated goalie helmet and like figure out what's going on in that head so you faced off against your old team this weekend. What was that like? Uh, anytime that I get the opportunity to play at TRIA is extremely exciting for me. And for that matter, just being able to play in the NWHL is something that I'm extremely proud of and thankful that I have the opportunity to do. And then playing Buffalo this weekend is extremely special for me because I got to play there for two seasons and I had some of the best time of my hockey career from the teammates that I had to the coaching staff. And then also this weekend, I got to play against one of my best friends, Kelsey Newman. So just being able to have all of those wonderful things all in one weekend was just fantastic. And we got two wins, which was something that we really wanted to do this year. We've struggled with our second game. We split a lot of weekends this year, which isn't something that we've wanted to do. So overall, it was just a fantastic weekend from start to finish. Yeah, I mean, you only face 58 shots, too, but who's who's counting? It's not, it's not, a, not a small number. Um, I'm really interested, and I'm sure a lot of people in, are interested. Uh, so you're going out here, and you're playing two games in a row on the weekends. What are the types of things you do during the week to prepare for that? Or, like, what does a typical week look like for you? A typical week for me is kind of all over the place. Uh, my full-time job, thanks to the NWHL and OS hockey, is to just be a hockey player and to coach hockey goalies. So I spend a lot of time at the rink. My day normally starts at, this is not fun to say, but about 5.15 in the oh, morning. Oh, God. I'm getting up. Yep. And then I'm going on the ice with whoever is brave enough to get, get up that early with me. And I'm coaching private lessons. And then I go off to a hockey academy called Gentry and I coach there for a couple hours. Then I get a nice little break for about two hours. Then I head back to the rink for probably three, four hours. Then I'm heading to the rink for my own practice. After that, I'm rushing out to go to another team practice or individual lesson, whatever it is with different goaltenders throughout Minnesota. It's kind of a chaotic schedule, but I really enjoy being able to spend so much time at the rink. It's something that I truly love to do, both playing and coaching. And I can't thank the NWHL enough for allowing me to have a visa that 
lets me do two things that I love the most playing and coaching. It gets a little stressful at times with all the travel, but it's well worth it. Yeah. And I mean, and by visa, if we couldn't tell by those A's. Did I say A? So I have a habit of saying that. Yeah. You didn't say A, but I meant like I the, how oh. you said the word A. I'm from Michigan, so I'm like super sensitive to the Canadian and I love it. I love it. I mean that with like complete love and nothing else. Awesome. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you have done a lot of things in your life. You played D1 hockey in Minnesota. You got, you've won two cups. You were the goaltender of the year. Those are a lot of things to be proud of. So, I mean, we I would love to hear like your hockey story, how you got into hockey and especially how you got into competitive hockey. For sure. So I have an older brother that was a hockey player. And when I was younger, I wanted to be just like him. So since he played player and my dad wanted him to play in the NHL, I was automatically kind of thrown in the net to play goalie <laughs> so that he could practice and get his shots really well. And I, I didn't really actually enjoy goaltender at all when I first started it, which I think is kind of pretty normal. You're getting shots thrown at your head all the time. I and mean, pucks hurt, especially when you're at that age and the equipment isn't the best yet. But then I started playing player and I really enjoyed that, but I had the worst attitude when I had to come off the ice. I would just cry and like throw my stick and I would try to punch the ref anytime somebody told me I had to switch and let somebody else on the ice. So Sorry, punch kinda, the ref? Can we just can we just circle back to that? <laughs> like I just like just I get so angry and just vicious when I had to come off the ice because I just loved it so much and I, I wanted to be on the ice as much as I could and anytime somebody told me I had to switch off I would just kind of lose it emotionally so my dad eventually told me I had two options I could either play goalie where I'd stay on the ice the entire time and not embarrass my parents by having these <laughs> meltdowns on the ice or I could not play hockey at all and me being somebody who loves hockey so much it was easy for for me to want to play goalie and then eventually I started to like it and now I'm really thankful for the past that I I had becoming a goaltender because it led me to be able to play for the Minnesota Gophers and if anyone is Minnesota fans listening on here they know how special the Minnesota program is not just only the hockey program playing wise but also the coaching staff and the entire program in general the fans there are absolutely phenomenal and then Again, I, I was really fortunate enough to be drafted by the NWHL. I played for, for Buffalo for a couple of seasons, and then now here I am back in Minnesota doing what I love for the state that I've grown to love so much. Well, we're very happy to have you in Minnesota. You're, you're certainly creating some exciting plays, exciting highlights for us. Uh, I was just – that actually leads perfectly into my next question. So you were drafted – in the first NWHL draft, did you know that was going to happen? Like, where were you when that draft was going on? Who were you with? What were you thinking? I, I actually remember the exact moment that it happened because I was out to eat with one of my teammates and her dad, Melissa McMillan, and she also got drafted. That I think she got drafted maybe sixth or seventh. I can't exactly remember, but that was just such an exciting time. I, I didn't know if I was going to be drafted. It was something that I would – always hoped would happen and when it did I was kind of blown away and super excited about the opportunity and being a Canadian at the time not a lot of Canadians were playing in the NWHL so I didn't know too much about it and then as soon as I had a conversation with Rick Steeling who was the coach and the general manager at the time I knew that it was a program that I wanted to be a part of and that was a really fun year that first year we ended up winning the Isabel Cup and I got to be goalie partners with two of the most incredible people that I know, Kelsey Newman, who's now still on the Buffalo Buttes. And Two name drops then, of her right now. They, <laughs> yeah, that's how you know it's Brianne real McLaughlin. friendship. Yeah, Brianne McLaughlin, who I think everyone who's an NWHL fan knows who she is and her epic performance in the Isabel Cup. I think she stopped like 78 shots or something. No big deal for her. No big that's deal, yeah. Normal. No, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that uh, everyone in this chat, like, knows the type of player you are and I think you know being shaped by the woman who came before you you're also shaping the woman who who came after you uh and and so I think your experiences are just are so wonderful and so poignant but I want to switch gears here a little bit because you know we are here to talk about hockey but twitch is also 
a gaming platform, primarily used to broadcast live video game playing. And I heard through a little birdie, which was, you know, our previous chat, that you used to be <laughs> into video games. What kind of games did you used to play? I was into a lot of video games, but my favorite <laughs> game when I was younger was Mario Party. Uh -huh. I used to play it when I was really young with my cousins, and we would get really competitive with each other and unfortunately I wasn't very good at the game I was younger than a lot of my cousins so I never ever ever won I was always the person coming in last I would get those like I don't know what they were those extra stars for having <laughs> the last place stars yeah, 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 yeah pretty yeah. much just to try to make it a little bit more competitive the participation uh, trophy it's okay <laughs> pretty much <laughs> like that um and then as I got older I still enjoyed the game it came out on Wii and I started playing it on that with my friends and I got a little bit better but I never really was the best at that and w another thing when I was really young when I would play video games just like you kind of heard earlier about my tinted tantrums on the ice when I would have to come <laughs> up I kind of be the same way when I would play video games I, I just wanted to win so bad I would get so frustrated and throw the remotes it came to a point where my parents were like, like you need to chill or we're gonna have to take away these video games from you you're just a little bit too competitive so I guess I got a little bit of that competitive edge in me when I'm on the ice and then when I'm playing games too another game when I was in high school was EA Sports I think it was 2012 it was whatever year they allowed you to customize players that mm -hmm. just ultimately became my favorite game ever I would customize so many different players and teams and I, I would just play them constantly and I was a little bit better at that game than Mario Party, but not much. That's also how I know you're Canadian, the Mario Party, but, you know, we'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, <laughs> What's it called? Is it Mario? No, oh no, no. You, you say you're saying it perfect. Don't listen to the Okay, haters. perfect. Okay. Game. From all your, all your cups just covering each of your ears. These little <laughs> cups. Uh, and you bring up EA Sports. Uh, that's such a... I love that topic because you've talked about character customization. So we have these titles. We have these NBA titles, NHL, NFL titles produced by EA Games. And up until recently, you couldn't play as a female character. Until last year when the NBA 2K released uh, all of the NBA teams into their exhibition games. So suddenly you could be, a, you know, a 12-year-old at home, you know, you're playing basketball, you're playing hockey, you're crushing all the boys, but you're, you love video games and you couldn't play as someone who looked like you because there isn't a WNBA video game. There isn't an NWHL video game yet, but... All of a sudden, you now have a chance to play a player who looks like you. And re because representation is so important. And that is why what you are doing is so important, right? Because we all have our role models growing up of these females in sports. But you are now someone's role model. People are looking at you. People are watching you right now and realizing, hey, I want to play professional hockey. I can. Hey, I want to do all these things. I can. Lev looks like me. So now it's a question, I promise. Growing <laughs> up, who were some of your female role models? Uh, the biggest female role model that I had that was a goalie and a hockey player was Shannon Zabados. I absolutely adored her. I, I related to her a ton because she grew up playing boys hockey and I played boys hockey at the time. So it was, and there was no NWHL at that time to aspire to play. So for her being a Team Canada member and somebody who had played boys hockey, it was something that I, I could truly relate to. And she was someone that I really wanted to be like. And a fun fact that I've actually never told anyone, I saw a picture of her one time online when I was looking her up when I was younger, because I used to do that a ton. And she stopped a certain way. So I suddenly, right after I saw that picture, started stopping the same way that she does. And I still stop that way now today. <laughs> so she she had a huge impact on me when I was a little kid and I never had ever met her but last year I had the opportunity to play against her and I had one of those moments of wow this is so cool this is someone who I absolutely adored as a young kid who I wanted to be who I wanted to meet and then here I am at the other end of the ice playing against her it was just such a 
a cool feeling and, and and it's so cool to look back on the progress of women's hockey too because mm-hmm. when I aspired to be like her there was no NWHL and yep. here I am playing in the NWHL with my all-time female idol it, mm-hmm. it was just such a really cool moment and now since I'm really involved in the coaching community and Minnesota I'm constantly on the ice with young female goaltenders and they uh, most of them adore both the Gophers and the Minnesota Whitecaps and they want to be in the same spot that I am right now and I know the impact that Shannon Zavados had on me without even talking to me and now here I am being able to communicate with these people pretty regularly being on the ice with them and one thing that I'm trying to do and I'm mimicking it kind of off of Kelsey Newman is she always invites some of the kids that she coaches to to the NWHL games and has them be the honorary captain so this year that's been one of my goals is to make sure that one girl that I coach gets the opportunity to be an honorary captain on the ice and it's so cool just to see their smiling faces and just how much they light up when they're on the ice and they get to see all of these people that they they truly enjoy watching and not only do they get to watch them but they also get to interact with them so it's just super cool and I'm so grateful for the NWHL and everyone who's made it possible to have these honorary captains and all my teammates who are such good role models to the people that I coach and then also all the young girls that I don't know that are coming to the game it's just such a it's a really cool feeling and experience to play for the Whitecaps and have that it is very cool I don't know how many people in Twitch chat you just made cry right now but it's probably more than one Okay, the next question, uh, and I need you to put a lot of thought into this, okay? Okay, I can do that. The zombie apocalypse hits. There's only one player in the NWHL you can take with you. And I need you to think about not only who you want to hang out with, but I need you to think about, you know, survivor survival skills, like who can fish, who can hunt, who can make the right decision, hardiness. Who would you take? Who would you bring with you? Who would you need with you? Hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I'll have to say Kelsey. Newman fourth time. Because... Fourth time, everyone. Fourth, <laughs> fourth shout out to Kelsey. I love this. I love oh this so goodness. much. Oh, my goodness. I need to pick a different. Should I pick a different person? No, no. And you get to pick. Be... <laughs> it would have to be a, a goalie, though, because <laughs> goalies have this unbelievable mindset, I think, that if they can stand in front of, like, slap shots from – people who can absolutely they can survive the zombie apocalypse hold on let me just let us let's switch over to this picture of you two real quick all right there we go there's the two of them looking great on uh lev's wedding day looking real good all right We, we we've seen it we've seen the picture so carry on why would you want her with you on the zombie apocalypse aside from your amazing bromance i think well She's pretty strong, so I feel like she could be the strength of the duo, and then I think I can run pretty fast, so if we ever came into a situation where I needed to get away from her for whatever reason, I could probably just outrun her, and she could just fight off the zombies or who's ever coming to attack us. Yes, Other definitely. That, look at those, would... I mean, look at those muscles. <laughs> Obviously, she's going to fight off anyone who comes by. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, great. Beautiful. All right. So... The last round of questions I have for you before we open up is a speed round. All right. So I'm going to need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. No thinking. Just pretend like it's you and me. There's no one else watching. Okay. Perfect. That'll be easy. Are you ready? I am more than ready. All right. Hot dogs or hamburgers? Hot dogs. Easy. (laughs) Ketchup or mustard? Oh, mustard. Top sheet or no top sheet? No top sheet. Oh, my God. I love you so much. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Franks or Tabasco? Franks? (laughs) Boneless or bone-in wings? Oh, that's tough. Both are good. Boneless, though. Would you rather have a cat with a human face or a dog with human hands? A dog with human hands. (laughs) (laughs) Would you rather sit on us? Very cold toilet seat or a slightly warm toilet seat? Oh, warm. Warm, warm. (laughs) Would you rather always have to look for your keys for 10 minutes before finding them or always smell like roast beef? (laughs) (laughs) Probably find my keys in 10 minutes. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay, good, good. All right, let me hold on. Let me just tally up your score really quickly. <clears throat> you got a seven. Well, great job. Is that good or seven? Does it's it's doesn't sound good. it's a great job. It's it's a great score. Uh, I'm <laughs> I'm also laughing because. I can't even read my own handwriting. Like, that's how you know I was destined to be a doctor when you can't read (laughs) your own handwriting. All right. So that's enough of my questions. We're going to hand it over to the audience. Uh, We're going to take a 60-second ad break. During that time, everyone, get up, stretch, submit your questions to Twitch chat starting now. Uh, Send us a tweet at hashtag NWHLOpenIce. You have 60 seconds. Lev, you got the timer? Yep, yep, you got the timer. I have the timer? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, 60 <laughs> seconds, go. <laughs> Let's see if it worked. Do we, all right, all right, we're still, the ad break didn't play. We're still good. Guys, we're still good. We don't want to do an ad break. We want to stay here with you right now. <laughs> all right, you guys, you have... I'm, my watch says 50 seconds to submit your questions. I saw some good ones about Lev's pads, uh, which were pretty good. I saw some good ones about Lev's background in hockey, about the hardest slap shot in the NWHL. Uh, so I'm going to give you 30 more seconds to come up with those questions. And Lev standing by, looking great, with her AirPods in. Um... <laughs> All right, you're still here. Yes, I'm still here. Oh, I see some good ones. I see some really good ones. Are you good at the 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 uh you were pretty good at the lightning round of questions, so we'll see how good you are at the unprepared round of questions. Okay. When you have to have a little bit more thought into it rather than uh just randomly shouting out the answers. Okay. So, what I we were talking about these questions beforehand and we were like, uh, you know, a dog with human hands would actually be really beneficial to humanity, you know, because they can perform tasks for you. They can perform acts of service for you if that's something that you enjoy. Uh, they could get you a, a non-alcoholic beverage to watch the NWHL game. All right. So we have our questions submitted by our moderator. Phil E. Buster says, who is the toughest shooter you faced this year? Uh, I'm going to have to pick someone on my own team. Oh. Sydney Baldwin. Okay. Uh, and then I'll pick somebody from a different team. But Sydney Baldwin has one of the hardest shots I've ever faced. And in our preseason, she hit me right on the collarbone. And oh. no joke, I could not move my arm for three weeks. And my wedding was like three weeks and one day after that. So I finally started feeling better for my wedding, but I was so stressed out about it because I couldn't lift my arm. And she just, she has her cannon. Um, From other players, someone who is really accurate and someone who has scored a ton on me on the past three or four seasons that I played in the NWHL is Madison Packer. She Mm -hmm. had a really nice goal against me. I think it was the first weekend we played at Tria. She just like picked the right corner on me it might have been the left corner over my blocker shoulder and it just was like the perfect elbow shot so she's one of the hardest most accurate shooters that i played against but baldy wins hands down for a hardest shot and for madison packer fans she will be on the show two weeks from tonight so we'll ask her if she remembers how that corner shot on lev uh all right next question is from miss harvey amanda has a french canadian accent or French Canadian name. Are you French? Uh, my I originally am from Montreal, Quebec, and my entire di- dad's side of the family is <laughs> all French. But I unfortunately cannot speak French very oh, well. Oh no! No, I've tried so many times. I even had Rosetta Stone, and I worked <laughs> on it for like what felt like eight hours every single day, and I just I couldn't really pick it up. I can read it pretty well, but speaking it is a little bit tough for me. We have a, a very lot of questions, but this is probably my my favorite question, so I'm going to ask it. Geoff Rojas asks, is Lev aware she scares the daylights out of fans because of how precise and economical her movements are? <laughs> oh. Wow. That's... That's nice. Is that a compliment? I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's... I'm pretty sure that's a compliment, so... Sweet. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really love... So are you aware that you are, like, 
wildly precise and economical and efficient as a goaltender? Is that something you were aware of? I mean, that's something that I, I would strive to do. I don't know if my goalie coach would completely agree with that. I know something that I've been trying to do ever since I was a little kid and even from the Gophers and now at the Whitecaps is limit my movement. Sometimes I overmove and I kind of get myself out of position. So that's definitely something that I've been working on. But thank you to whoever made that very nice comment. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Last question. This one's from Twitter. It's from Jolly Whiskey and Mike Murphy. When and how did you decide to feature fish on your gear? And how can we to get you to have more fishes on your pad? We want more fishes. <laughs> wow, that's another compliment on my pad. That's that's nice. I've had a lot of young kids kind of chirp me for having what they call a stinky fish on uh. my goalie pad. So I appreciate whoever likes my goalie pads. Um, I wanted to have really cool goalie pads all my life. I've had these really boring kind of nothing going on, mostly white, because I thought it was an advantage to me to make me look bigger because I'm not the biggest goalie. But I just kind of want to look cool on the ice and. I do a lot of Instagram posts and I thought it might be cool to have some different looking gear that not a lot of people have. And hopefully I've achieved that in having a fish on my goalie pad. And it's a walleye for anyone who wants to know. And that's the state fish for Minnesota. So there is some connection a little bit to wow. the whitecaps and having a fish on my goalie pad. That's awesome. I didn't know the background. So thank you for sharing that fact with us. All right. That is all... <laughs> <laughs> about your fish pads we want more <laughs> fishes uh yeah we're gonna need like a school of walleye on your pads if possible i think that's what you got to give twitch what they want you know we need a whole school or at least like a small classroom um so that is all the time we have today thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule you should have been in bed hours ago to get up at you know the time you have to get up to do the things yeah. you do uh do you have any parting words for chat just thank you so much to anyone who's tuned in and asked questions and thanks to you too this was a lot of fun and i can't wait to watch all the other nwhl players that come on and hopefully i can ask some questions and they can answer them but overall thanks so much this was a ton of fun you're an awesome host yeah well you are wonderful you're very easy to talk to and you are an inspiration for everyone who watches you so please good luck this weekend and have a wonderful weekend have a wonderful week where are we thanks <laughs> okay bye love <laughs> bye all right before we sign off that was awesome lev is awesome she's even better in person than she is on in the game I don't know how that's possible. But before we sign off, we're going to start a new tradition here at NWHL Open Ice. At the end of the episode, we are going to play a clip that users have submitted. So one of the wonderful things about Twitch, aside from being able to interact with people in real time and having being able to answer questions in real time, is that if you like a part of this show, you can clip it. You can go on, oh, hover over the screen and click clip and highlight any part of any show or any game that you want. So what we're gonna do is at the end of the week today, we're gonna pick our favorite clips, okay? So this week's clip is submitted by the Goalie Guild. Thank you for your strong work. And it features, who else? Who else? Who else would it feature but Lev? Here is today's clip of the week. The ice shot blasted just wide. That was a nice idea. Another shot. Oh, big save by Levier. Levier standing on her head. What a play. She stacks the pass. That's her. It's Lev. I mean, she got like 17 saves in a row. Who is counting? That was our clip of the week. Thank you to the Goalie Guild for that. So this weekend, if you see an awesome play and you want to clip it, clip it for us. I will be going through Twitch's clips Finding the clip of the week. Thank you, Goalie Guild. Calling you out on air for those awesome, awesome shots of Lev. Um, all right. So before we sign off this weekend, we've got some really awesome hockey coming up for you. Make sure you tune in. The Whale travel to Minnesota and take on the Whitecaps Saturday and Sunday. Puck drops at 1 p.m. Central Time. For those of us on the East Coast, if you may be mad at math, that's 2 p.m. If you're in, like, 
the middle of the Pacific. That's probably closer to the morning time. Uh, and if so, they've got a double header this weekend. And if, if two days of hockey in a row aren't enough for you, we've got hockey on Monday. Monday, the Riveters take on the Pride. See if they can keep that undefeated season rolling, or if the Riveters are going to take them down. That's it. That's it for our show tonight. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We will be here at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the rest of the season or until Danny gets tired of my face. Whichever one comes first, find out. Uh, next week, we have the Buffalo Buttes rookie defender, defender Anna Orzakowski. Come on, give me some points for saying that on my first try. On my first try, I just said that. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that follow button up above you. It's free. It supports the league. Give us a follow. Thank you for tuning in. Have a happy and a healthy week. We hope you enjoyed the show. By tuning in every week and engaging, you're directly supporting the league. Do you want another easy and free way to show your love? Amazon Prime customers have access to one free Twitch subscription a month. First things first, if you haven't already made a Twitch account, click the sign up button, which should be in the top right corner of your screen if you're on a computer. What a great show. Oh, you're, you're finished? Once you have a Twitch account, head over to twitchprime.com and follow the instructions to link your Amazon account to your Twitch account. Sounds complicated, but it's not. Once you've done that, click the subscribe button right here. And make sure you scroll down to subscribe for free. Done. Now you've accessed exclusive Twitch emotes and some other fun stuff. Pro tip, the subscription doesn't auto renew, so make sure you do it every month. That's it. Thanks for watching. Go sports.